welcome welcome great to have you all here with us today is going to be an exciting day oh i've got one of my favorite people on today looking forward to having her share with us and educate us and um yeah good afternoon joy i just want to use that this opportunity to welcome those who are joining us for the very first time you've probably never joined um the hangout cafe before and this is your first time so welcome augustina welcome nice to have you here so at the hangout cafe we talk we laugh we comfort we educate we encourage we tell stories that heal we dream big and we pray so i mean we don't do everything the same day but most times that's what we do especially encouraging um reminding you that you're loved by god and um, yeah, we just want you to leave here feeling much better than you came. So welcome, Chibundu. I can see ya. Chibundu, don't tell me it's because it's Aramide that's on today that you're here. If you're near, you too, I can see ya. You guys, if I don't see you next week, then I'll know that's because of Aramide that you're here today. <laughs> oh, can you welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, before I bring Aramide in, I just want to say something. Well, actually, no, let me tell you about the conversation I was having. <laughs> I've been, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I know. Yeah, just like children do. Yeah, I know. It's Aramide. It's all right. It's fine. I know you guys love her. <laughs> you don't love me. Okay. Aramide. Ah, I know your fans are here. Well, it's good. It's good. We welcome all Aramide's fans, people that are joining because of Aramide welcome we we'll, we we'll love you we really do love you welcome to hangar cafe it is welcome so i was having a conversation hi is this e? um i was having a conversation with someone the other day and um she was saying that because of the lockdown that you're allowed to make mistakes you know <laughs> don't um put yourself under any pressure whatever mistakes you make this during this lockdown it's fine you're excused but what I actually want to say is that we really shouldn't, um, even though it's, you know, lockdown, we shouldn't um, put ourselves in um, holding patterns. And I'm sure you probably know what that means. You know, when planes, when they're attempting to land and maybe there's no runway or the weather is bad, they put them in holding patterns. And for some of us, that's what we're doing. Just waiting for everything to change, waiting for the lockdown to be over. But I hope you realize that things may not ever go back to normal. So are you just going to wait till and wait and wait till whenever? So please, please don't put your life on hold. Whatever it is you want to do, do it now. Even during the lockdown, even with the pandemic, don't put your life in um, lockdown. Okay, great, great. So yeah, I can see the real cafe. What, what did she say? Cafe Nestia. Well, well, I'm probably not pronouncing it properly, but welcome. Okay, so I'm going to bring Aramide in now. I think we've got a lot, a lot, a lot to cover today. Aramide, can you send me a request, please? Um, let me see if I can find you, actually. Aramide. Where's she now? Yeah, okay. We got you. We move, yes, we move, we move on, we don't wait. Hey, sweetheart. Hey, Hi, sweetheart. Nancy. Hi, everyone. I'm fine. Good, good, good. Good when I saw your glasses, I was like, hmm, glasses or no glasses? But I think I can see, so no glasses for no now. Glasses. You can, I can, well, I can see, but um, if I'm going to read, which I'll, prob I'll probably do, um, because we've got lots of questions, yeah. I need my glasses. I have my notebook as well because I was you were talking about holding. But I was already making notes, so Auntie, maybe you're the one that's going to lead today and speak. <laughs> no, it's you. It's you. I, I was actually going to also make a confession. You know, another reason why I wear my glasses is because I've got bags, so I think that the glasses come sort of covered them oh, up a bit. I've had this Basically. Oh wow! The bags At all, I can't see. Anyway, that's the thing. So I may need to put my glasses on at some point because I can't. See. I mean, I can't see, but sometimes I need extra help. So, but yeah. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank oh, it's so nice to have you. It's so nice to have you. 
Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. I have my mug with the mixed coffee. Mm. Mm. You don't get a hangout um, coffee mug. So I need send, one. We'll send one to you. Thank you. And a t-shirt. Auntie, please don't forget. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes. We'll send that to you. <laughs> and folks, if you don't have your hangout cafe mug, the link is in the bio. Get yours. Okay? Get yours. And make sure, I hope you all have your mugs too. And you're joining us. This is a cafe. Yep. Show we have Chilling. Cafe. Sipping. Sipping. Bantering. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> ah, this is so nice. Aramide. Nice to have you. And okay. you. Nice to be here. <laughs> so for those who are new to Hangar Cafe, what we do now, what we're going to do now is give Aramide a warm, very, very, very warm Hangar Cafe welcome. This is her first time here. She's not a stranger to me. And I can see she has her fans here. Let me not mention her. <laughs> Friend. <laughs> <laughs> so can we give her a warm yes? I can see the hugs and the love. Let's show her that we love her. <laughs> we love, live, live, live here every day. And um, do you know, I'm super excited that you've been away from social media for about a month. I have. And, and this is the first time you're out <laughs> hanging out with us. Wow. Literally, I have, I have. For someone, I was so rusty just trying to set this up because, um, I mean, I would do this every other day or every day sometime last year, and then now I was struggling. I was like, oh my goodness. So, um, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's interesting. It's a breath of fresh air. I feel like I'm back to what I know, but it took. A, in fact, you had to ginger me. So, thank you, Auntie, for this. This is Yay. this is great. Actually, this is my first speaking anything this year. Yeah. <sighs> We feel so honored. <laughs> I really feel honored. <laughs> nice to have you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so as I said, Aramide is not a stranger to me, and I'm sure she's a stranger to a lot of you. Um, but I'll tell you guys a little bit about her, especially for those who don't really know her very well. And you know, Aramide, I was looking at your bio CV, and I thought, my goodness, you know, it reads like those, those who, you know, all the high sellers and all those. Uh, when uh, no, but it's true. So if I had to read everything, we'll be here till God knows when. So I just thought I'll pick up a few. I'll pick a few things to um, to read. And honestly, Aramide, you've achieved a lot. Seriously, you <laughs> thank have you. Thank you. You have done so well. I know life has been challenging. You've had a few ups and downs, but. The truth is that you've done so well for yourself, and I'm really proud of you. Thank and I'm you. sure your dad too. Thank and your mom is looking down and cheering you and Thank saying, you Well too. done, sweetheart. You really do. You make you. us proud. Thank Somebody you. Say. Thank you. Make you. us proud. And you know, every single one of us, we should, um, we should have a mission statement for our lives a vision and a mission statement. And I ran with this mission statement, a mission for her life is to influence the private sector policies in Africa and to build the African SME ecosystem through her entrepreneur system. And the platform she uses, at least one of them, is Niger Startup that she founded. And guess what? They have a virtual 90,000 member sector hub for small and medium businesses. 90,000 Aramide. Wow. <laughs> and you know how much has been? She actually trained as a computer scientist and she has a yeah. unique 15 year background in technology, marketing, and strategy. And oh my goodness, I could go on and on and on. But she's also received a lot of awards. She's the recipient of the Investing in Women UK Wonder Woman Award for Women in Technology. She got that in um, 2019. She also won the Social Media, that's why I call her Social Media Queen. She also won the Social Media Award uh, for Good Award in 2019. She was named one of the 100 most inspiring women in 2018 by leading Ladies Africa and The Guardian. She's an ambassador for Sherry Blair Mentorship Group, also mentor with Google, Launchpad Africa, and Microsoft. Aramide, we could go on and on about you. Um, she also has an MBA, not from just <laughs> an MBA. <laughs> Thank and God. Kellogg School of Management with a focus on marketing and strategy. So Aramide, 
welcome again to Hangout Cafe. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. It's an honor. I'm really honored to be here, hanging out with you and everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so <laughs> today the main topic is the social dilemma. So we're going to be talking about social, social dilemma. Media. Social dilemma. We're going to be talking about um, social media, the uses, and a lot of stuff. But I want to start off, Aramide, by asking this question. What exactly <laughs> is social media? Because I'll tell you. Oh, what. my goodness. <laughs> I'll tell you. Because some people say they're not on social media, but then they're always updating their WhatsApp status and post posting. So what is oh. social media? Please tell me. <laughs> by the way, WhatsApp is social media. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't have a textbook definition here, but it's any um, platform that is technology enabled that allows you to interact and, um, you know, communicate and engage with other people online. Of course, everybody references Facebook as the, you know, when you think about social media, you think about Facebook because Facebook started as a platform to um, bring people together. Um, I think more in a, an educational setting, but then of course it expanded and grew. People could find long lost friends, could connect with each other. So that was the initial sort of like, you know, rationale for setting up these social networks. And of course, it's always sitting on technology. So we use technology and that could be, of course, a website or a an app on your phone or whatever. Um, so of course, there's so many different types of social media um, platforms. Um, like I mentioned, there's Facebook, there's Twitter, Instagram that we're on now. Now there's even things like Clubhouse and all that. Um, WhatsApp, definitely, because as much as WhatsApp was just an app to more like co communicate and speak and chat, now you can engage and interact even more. They've enabled more, um, um, more functionality. So of course, you know, um, WhatsApp is not immune from this. So you can't say that you're not on social media and you're on WhatsApp, by the way. It's just, you know, um, but yeah, so it's a way to connect, communicate. Um, and now you can do so many other things on um, social media as well. There have been so many stories of people finding love, life partners, finding jobs, business opportunities, even able to pitch their businesses, um, you know, connect, made friends, um, helped with, you know, just even like health and information, finding out information that was useful for them, all sorts of things. So, um, yeah, it's definitely not going away. Um, and yes, yeah, so that's, you know, the bright side of social media. There's just so much and even yet to uncover. So if we think we've discovered everything, there'll be more apps coming up over the next few years that allow you to do more and more. Wow. So yeah, so it's um it's great. It's a great tool for communication, for connecting, um, you know, um and for doing so much more. Wow. Okay, thank you. So <laughs> my people that say I'm not on social media, but I'm on WhatsApp. It is actually social media. LinkedIn too is um, social media. Yes. Okay. LinkedIn is social media. Okay. Good way to connect and network in a professional setting. And if you notice, so even LinkedIn now, everybody's putting more you know social functionality where you can share stories so linkedin has stories twitter has stories just for you to be able to engage more because that allows for more people to know more about you and for you to get more um at least on the user side to engage and for people to follow and find out more but i guess also you know when you think about it from the company side the reason they're doing all these things is to increase the need to advertise so more people would think okay yeah so i want to advertise to reach more people yeah. to engage with more people so obviously you know even though their interest on the user side the main interest on the company side now is to to create more avenues for advertising increase advertising revenue and all of that mm -hmm. so you know there's all this back and forth with of course regulators about you know use of our data and all i know we're going into that later on but you know because you know, you know when you think about it you know is it a, a monopoly is it is it um, the antitrust issues? Just all this stuff around monetizing, monetization on social media because really their interests, and that's why they keep changing the algorithm so that then people can spend more money on advertising. Okay. So essentially, yeah. So that's the other side of, of it as well. Okay. So you, it, the way you've come across around media is like, oh, social media, it's, it has a lot of positive uses and all of that. But then a lot of people have this negative... Um, idea about social media so tell us yeah. what's the problem 
but using so yes and, and and you'll be shocked to find out that um the people who stay away from social media some of them actually work on social media platforms so they've been able to see the i'll call it maybe the dark side of social media or the side that a lot of us don't pay attention to where you know our information is just out there but again we are the ones putting our information out there we're not really thinking about it so we're just putting so much stuff out there and so they're gathering you know our not even just data but our behavior our interests what trigger you know how we take this action yeah. and things like that so it's actually quite scary you know but we don't, we don't we don't we don't really look at it that again so 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 the, the hope is that it's more for commercial use but you just never know right because with the way things have gone now with the US elections and even other countries things happening you don't know but the key thing is you know it was initially to just um um commercialize our information but then you know when they started having leaks and um political parties could buy information that's where red flags that had been raised so um basically i think it's more for commercial use but again it's scary because why do you want to know that just because you show me something it means that I'll take this action it's a little bit like you don't have to know everything about me kind of thing so it's quite intrusive and when you think about it for adults maybe that's okay but for younger people you know it starts to make people worry so some of these people who have worked in these um in these um people who work in these um social media platforms and organizations don't have their kids on social media their kids are not allowed some of them yes you know there's been a documentary in fact it's called the social dilemma and you know they were saying yeah their kids are not on social media for that reason so i think it's important to be careful because there's just all sorts out there unfortunately now there's a lot of things going on all these funny challenges which are fun but then when you think about it you know for a young person accessing so much stuff that typically they wouldn't have had access to but just because they're online they can see anything yeah. it's scary because what are you feeding your mind with you know as a child why are you being exposed to that yeah. so those are the things that make it quite scary and people just don't recognize or realize um so i think one way to go around it is to also in, in, um um implement some um, censorship I I think the ch- child um some settings that you can set up right but when you have a teenager it's a little bit tricky because how do you I don't know you know that's how everybody has a way of managing their home and building up their children but I think there are settings where you can put some things in place or maybe not even so people say okay they're not going to have their child have a phone until a certain age or whatever but even then it's still very scary there's just so much and now it's almost like certain things that we saw as Ooh, how can that be people see as normal now yeah. you know we're actually realizing things that before it was like, ah you know so and it's just what the world is becoming you can't really point finger so with that in mind it's scary because p- human beings won't change in terms of how they interpret and take action so if in the, maybe in the 60s 70s certain things are like oh okay you know that's a li- little bit of a taboo but now it's normal mm-hmm. you know human beings haven't changed that much for 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 there not to be an adverse effect on the person just because now everybody's saying it's okay so i just find it's very very the world is just becoming an interesting place you know and which is why the family is so important the foundation sorry i, I don't want to preach but the family is so important <laughs> it's so important where you know the you know the foundation because that's really where the first of education comes that's where you really instill values because there's just so much out there when they go to school they expose other friends who maybe have access to all these things what do you do right so it's really like that you know um um first layer of training imparting doing things in love letting people understand or children understand why you know yeah that's happening well these are the reasons why we don't do this just because everyone is doing that so it's so important i can't i can't overemphasize it I have a passion for um just engaging youth on just interesting topics things that are going on now just for us to see different sides right so yeah so what's happening but also what do we know as our own truth if i want to go down the whole christian aspect because you know there is our own truth as well but yeah that's for another discussion yeah. 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 <laughs> without going on too much <laughs> wow so it's it's amazing because i see and it's interesting you see something that well for me anyway i see something on social media and i think this is wrong but you see the many <laughs> likes people is like everybody yeah and then everybody's congratulating them and saying well done and you wonder what's going on and people the sort of role, that's why it's so important to have people like you 
come to talk about this because the sort of role models that we have out there now is ugh, I don't know what I would call them. Well, I guess everybody can be anybody can be a role model, but they're not good role models, yeah. especially for the young ones. It's and um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I was going to say. Yeah. Sorry, you, you said something. No, I was going to say that for Instagram, anybody can a teenager can set it up because they don't verify your age anyway. Even though they say you have to be over thirteen, do they verify? They they, they do ask. They, they ask, ask you and you take them, just say, but then, well, yeah, that's it. But then at least on their own part, they're covered because they have done the checks. So, but they're not going to do anything extra by you know very no, they're not going to say put your your passport or anything like that. No, um. But you know the, what 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 will happen is regulators are looking at all these things so they will begin to see what needs to be done because before there was never social media so mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that they're also learning in terms of how they can begin to <laughs> sanction social media platforms for xyz or put things certain measures in place just to protect the user and all um but then on the point of role models you know the world is changing so what what you may see as your normal may be different from you know i just it's hard to say okay now because just because i see something as ah that's weird the world may see it as it's okay yeah. so what's your own why you know yeah. you know so it I, I think again it's just down to your own your own right. sort of like setup and your identity how you want to define your own world and yeah. say okay do you know what for us that that's not quite that's not the angle that we're going in that's not because i know our values they don't align and all but yeah it's an interesting time to be alive honestly good but also you know one has to also be careful yeah yeah Okay, so even apart from the teenagers, what about even adults get addicted to social media, don't they? And how what? does it affect, from what you know, how does it affect our well-being and mental health? Yeah, so I think I hadn't been on social media for a while. And then once I think I, I went on once this week to look at something and just reading just i had i had spent an hour so instagram good thing about it instagram popped up to say oh you know you spent an hour already and i was like ah, just reading just, can you imagine not even anything productive but that goes to show you how you know it's so addictive in a way so we spend a lot of time um just going through information but i think that's actually okay because information is fantastic i'm very passionate about access to information okay. but i think we don't recognize how because we are consuming all this stuff like just on a constant basis reading different perspectives reading a lot of vulgar stuff that we may not intend to but it just comes in your way you know there's a lot of um i'll say maybe vanity and comparison for people who may not necessarily be secure and all of that so you're just constantly like this digesting stuff that maybe on a normal day you'd have woken up pick up a book, read a book, listen to the radio, switch it off, or listen to, watch TV for 20 minutes, gone out, gone to work, or gone to school. Now you're constantly like, just like feeding on information that is not necessarily, you didn't demand for it. So it just comes your way. And because it's addictive, constantly digesting it. So you can just imagine what goes on your con subconscious. It's constantly being clogged with every and anything, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think that's where the risk is for People don't talk about it enough. So when it talks about the subconscious mind, it's really what we feed it. Yeah. So when people say, oh, they're going to take a social media break, you can understand why, because sometimes it's a bit much, you know. Um, I think maybe 80% of people, I don't know, and I'm sure maybe we can do a quick poll. When you wake up in the morning, what's the yes, first thing you do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you, um, do you know, do you do your whole sort of like devotion type thing or do you like go on your phone and look at WhatsApp and Instagram? Most likely, you know, we probably do the latter and it's just not because we don't want to be devoted. It's just because it's addictive. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing, right? Um, so when you think about it, if you're clogging your mind with all sorts of information right from the morning up until, you know, evening. So yeah, you have your LinkedIn, you have your Twitter, Instagram, maybe something happened today. So, ah, you know, you're going to go and you spend so much time on there. Just filling your mind with a lot of stuff. So it's important to be careful because, again, these are, our, I'll call it gates, you know, and so there are gates and they're gateways into our mind. And it's important when we feed our mind. Imagine, and it's okay, you feed all that, but how do you flush it out? That means you now have to do extra things that would edify, right? So you have spent extra time doing that. Yeah. So if you can have a system where you regulate the amount of, you know, just 
Sometimes it's just unnecessary chatter or bantering and you're spending so much time doing that. You're also less productive, by the way, as a person because you're not, you know, doing productive stuff. You're just consuming information that isn't necessarily helping you or stimulating your mind or anything. So I think it's just important as an individual to put those checks and balances in place and to be careful, you know. And, and we're all human, so we all, so you just have that check so you can check yourself and say, oh, by the way, let me stop and then that kind of thing. Okay, let's go to, so how can um, businesses, individuals use social media positively, especially businesses? Say that again, so I missed media. that. Yeah. I missed so, the question. So. I said, so how can businesses and even individuals use social media in a positive way? In a positive way, yeah. Yeah, I mean, social media is great for, like I said, all sorts for connections, for new business, for funding, you know, me getting supplies and vendors. It's such a great resource, you know, just at the tip of your fingers, just by knowing, just or just by putting the word out about something, someone can respond and, you know, you can get what you need. So on that note, social media is great. And the way to do that would be to be intentional about, you know, the networks that you join. Also be um, curious to so find out what's going on you know, look around, you know, uh, connect, you know, follow, join networks, join groups. And then through that, you, you can you increase your network virtually. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, in person, but at least there you have one degree of separation from whatever you need or two or three degrees. So it's just a question away and all of that. Then also be intentional about your identity as well. So if you're an individual or a business, you know, what is the identity? Who are you on social media? What are you about? What are your values? Like you're saying, your vision, your mission, what are you about? If I went to your page and I spent 10 seconds or five seconds there, can I know what you're about? So that then I can just make up my mind, like, okay, this is somebody I want to follow. This is something that they, they have interesting content on here, right? Whether it's gossip, whether it's love and marriage, whether it's wisdom, nuggets, whatever, I think it's important to be very, very intentional about what you're about. It doesn't mean you should be posting the same, maybe like, um, design or whatever they're creative ways of articulating your core you know values or whatever so your interests or whether whatever it is you're selling again you know let people just be aware of what you're about so if you're not doing that already or if you feel that your page is kind of all over the place or you know there's just so many things going on people can't really put their fingers on it might be worth going back and thinking about okay so what are we about, you know, and what do we want to communicate? But then again, um, before you even communicate, you need to know who you're targeting. So who are you for? Who are you? Who are the people that you typically gravitate towards your type of content that you put out? So and that's probably most, most likely your target audience. And you would know if you don't even know or cannot define it just yet, you can know by just engaging or looking at the comments, seeing the people that reach out to you, what are their personalities or demographics or psychographics like are they typically 17 18 year old girls who are trying to set up their careers you know there's a way you would know just by getting information gathering information online and so through that that even influences your style of communication on social media so you know that if you're if you're appealing to or your target is pre-teens for example there's a way you communicate that will be different from if you're you know appealing to maybe 45 year olds and above so it's just those types of things that you need to be to be aware of which is your identity your audience your your tone the communication and then of course all the pretty stuff there's just so many apps now that help you make your aesthetic so nice you know in fact i've just been so archaic with this but generally we have a lot of people on here who are doing amazing things on their page by the pages by the way i can see all the comments and you go to their pages you can see the lovely designs and all but even now there are apps that allow you to do these things very easily so it's not a lot of work that you put into it um so yeah so there's so, just so much you can do and then in terms of just growing and um, just using it well, I think following the right pages, like I said, you know, following hashtags, um, being visible. Visible is visibility is a good thing. Please don't follow me. <laughs> um, but visibility is a good thing. It's a, it's a very good thing because when you're visible, you're top of mind. And so um, then people just remember. What, what, what does that mean? Okay, so I'll take, for example, I'll take Bumi, Bumi Odua, for example, on, 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 on here now. 
So I mean, now she's 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 written a book. She's released a book. Congratulations, by the way, that's so amazing. Well done. She's written a book, right? Um, but even before she she released or launched the book, or maybe just after, she started doing Instagram lives and Zoom sessions in relation to that topic. So already, if I need to just maybe think about that topic, like oh, I just I just she just comes to my mind mm. for that because I know that she's invisible. She's um done sessions. She's spoken about what she's done. She's collaborated. Yeah. You know she's you know she's been visible. She's been active. She shared content. She's you know posted. So that way you're engaging. You know you're not just you know oh you're like socializing, letting people know what you're about. Could be in a subtle way. Could be in a, in a loud way. Some people are quite loud. They're like putting twelve posts per day. Look at me. Look at me. This is what I'm up to. It really depends on your personality as well. You can't be what you're not, right? But find what works for you, and then you know be visible. So so yeah. So that's an example. Okay. Congratulations, yeah. Bobby. Do you want to put your link um, in the comment box so that we can people can have a look at your page and follow you, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> Um, another person, another person, Ibene as well, because Ibene has just put up like a course that she's doing. She's launching a course, and again, her identity is very clear. So she's very clear about who she's she's reaching out to. People yeah. who are expecting children, very clear, right? So if I ever ever need that kind of thing, she's the one I'll go to. But apart from knowing that that's what she does. She's putting stuff out. So she has a podcast. She has sessions coming up. That's the way. And let, let's say, let's say maybe you've not done it in a while. You're rusty. That's actually the way. You can just start again. So literally, maybe find one person, have a joint. Like, okay, auntie, auntie, auntie has gingered me now. So you have, have a live session, right? So you have a live discussion. People know what you're about, you know. And from that, you know, it, things just develop. It's literally just taking that step and then just... Is it the yellow brick road or whatever? I don't know. You know the, the, the way the path just starts forming in that way, like taking the first step. So I don't think people should find it daunting. You know, it's just take one step. You know, you don't have to do everything at the same time, but like literally just take the step and then things just start unveiling themselves. Great. Okay, Ivine, can you put your link there too? <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, you're right. So not just be over all over the place. What are you about? You want to know where you're about. Um, okay. Now the other question I was going so, to ask. Sorry, Auntie. No, you know me. I, I yeah. I, I feel sorry. So I feel sorry for you because you um you're my first uh, session I'm having this year. So I'm going to talk, 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 talk. <laughs> but um, I wanted to say that you know there was a time where also you know it wasn't really clear what I was wanting. You know maybe also when you have a lot of skills or God has given you a lot of gifts, the clarity doesn't come just like that. I have one friend who calls himself the clarity coach. But um, when you find what you're most passionate about or what you feel more pressed to, to launch, out, launch out in first, that could be the thing. So for me, in the end, I found that, to be honest, I liked, you know, um, I, I had seen the journey I had been on. So I wanted to help younger people, you know, like chart and chart their course and find their way in that way. So yeah. if that is, you know, um, if, you, if you know what you're about and what your identity is, then just take a step. And for me, it wasn't always easy initially, but when I kind of, found that okay look this is what i i want to i want to veer towards there's a lot of things that i'm also doing but that is a passion that i have and at least you know that you that can be something that you can really immerse yourself in and you can be about that so then you're a reference point for that subject matter you know people will call you for that you know people so you know there's no how you wouldn't go to the person's page and you know okay so this is what they're about is it leadership is it mentorship whatever so so yeah and I guess it's also good to have, you know, well, what do they call it now? Your profile, to have whatever yes. you do on your profile, yeah. not just leave it blank. And please also have your picture on your profile. <laughs> Some people don't. And they're like, why am I going to follow you? Yeah, I don't know who I'm following if I don't, if you don't have your picture. It's not always, I mean, it's not always easy because even to get on social media takes a lot, you know, because you're just visible. You don't know how visible you are, literally visible to the world, especially if your page is going to be open. So it takes a lot for someone to get there. But when you get there, then it's fine. So before I did Instagram lives, I just was so terrified about seeing my face. Like, how can I just be talking? You know, to... So I would go on a live and I would just be so, but then after, after a while, it got better. So I think people shy away, especially women, a lot of women, African, Caucasian, whatever, they shy away from just um, putting themselves out there naturally, generally. 
And so that's why communities like this are good and seeing what people are doing are good because it can inspire you to then, oh, if this person is doing it, let me give it a try, yeah. um, that sort of thing. But yeah, it's not always easy. Um, but and I, th- I think after a while, you know, people get more relaxed um, online and on social. So yes, definitely having your bio written well it's very helpful because you know you don't want to just people want to know like i said i can land on your page let me just know what you're about in like the first five seconds social media the attention span of users is so short that you want to be very clear about your identity you know what your description is and then when they go on your page as well you know what you're about so again like you said please have your bio description and then of course the picture <laughs> is so vain imagine like reading vogue magazine and it's just like words 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 so i think if we look at it that way you realize that people are quite visual as well which is why when you see all these influencers they all have photo shoes some people have organized photo shoots from now to you know different outfits just because they want to use it for their posts some people some some might raise their eyebrows but when you think about it they're being intentional that's what drives engagement unfortunately it's just what it is with the vanity metrics and all so they're being intentional so nice glossy pictures you know high resolution nice poses nice people like people who look nice it's just what it is and so it's just that intentionality of everything in this social media world that we're in <laughs> i'm laughing because I'm <laughs> thank you another thing um, it's not about it's not necessarily about the likes is it on social media i don't i don't necessarily think so anymore um and i think a lot of large corporations are realizing that as well that yes yeah, so it likes what it likes amount to so they they realize that sometimes even certain influencers that they've used yes they've gotten likes but they may not have gotten conversions so they're using smaller and smaller size influencers now who may have 500 people but who know that if i if i engage with this influencer in this community i can get you know more conversion that can get people to, to to do more to take certain actions it doesn't even have to be purchases but just to take certain actions using smaller communities so that's the new, whole new strategy with a lot of corporations okay. so yes it's not just about the likes and there's the good side of likes because you know that's the first thing people look at oh 1 million followers so so and so likes um or you know um you know if they have a lot of followers it means that okay potentially means they will have a lot of buyers it doesn't always work that way um and i think now likes isn't um the only metric that they use so they use a lot of engagement as well so different types of engagement you know now you can save posts you can share posts you can comment so it's not just likes then on the dark side again likes you know because of this whole likes thing it hampers um just the well-being and 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 um mental health because yeah. people are too anxious yeah. um you put up a post and then you going back to the post to check the number of likes every half hour to see to see who has liked you know and and it happens with a lot of young people yeah. you know so you might put up a, a, a selfie and maybe only two likes from your class and you and it starts getting you depressed that kind of thing so um i think also the social platforms are being intentional about not letting that be the only um driver or metric yeah. so if you notice on some people's um social media you can't see number of likes anymore on my phone i can still see the numbers of likes but on certain i don't know maybe it's an update or whatever i think they're just being very um, um intentional and sensitive towards this whole thing about social media and mental health because there's just a direct correlation it's unbelievable um so especially with young people there's just so many more um the stats have gone up with regards to depression and suicide of young girls in the preteens as at when social media started because of the you know everything social media represents so yeah so likes is not the only only, only measure and it shouldn't be it shouldn't be the only metric um, i've just seen somebody ask or oh, people delete posts i actually know someone who if within 30 if within one hour she doesn't get 30 likes she'll delete the post so yeah let me see i want to say that yeah that's a bit but if you think about it this way you know some people are, you have to also know where you're on social media for okay. if you're on social media for that whole you know um you want that whole engagement because of that vanity fame thing then it's justified actually because you you, you that's the whole you want to create a perception so you have to now ask no but it's what it is so you have to know why you're on social media so in fact when i do training and stuff i always um tell individuals or um organizations you have to identify what your why is on social media so that you're clear 
Yeah. So I, I I can see that happening with people who okay no likes ah because you don't want they don't want maybe a brand to come and see that ah they only have two likes and whatever but I just see I don't see that as I mean come on there there are times where so many things impact the number of likes you know there's now the algorithms and stuff but I I know that like she said people will definitely delete if they don't have so so and so likes but the way to know if your post is going to have a lot of likes is within the first five minutes you know. Because of the algorithm now, so um, and the algorithm is even old anyway. But you know, you can tell if you start getting a lot of engagement or or likes in the first maybe like ten minutes, then you know that it's gonna be a good post, right? But then maybe you should be able to already know you know, the kind of posts that would generate engagement from just history, right? So look at your history. Look at what look at what and um, drive engagement. A friend of mine, um, she she runs a swimming school, and she was saying how yeah. So a lot of the time when she puts her uh, her own um picture. Um, on the post, she gets more engagement yeah. because people want to relate with the individual, the face of the business. Yeah. So just doing that quick audit, you know that, okay, so if I put a post about this or that, you know, I'll get more engagement. So you can tell what drives engagement and what doesn't, right? But again, it's also about your why. Some people are on social media for just, you know, whatever, or to raise money or to find love. You just know what your why is and then, you know, <laughs> do you so okay if you were looking for followers on instagram how do you what, i read something that said that you also have to engage so let's say i'm on your platform right and you post stuff so i keep engaging with you um is that a way of getting other followers how do you get followers i mean apart from okay whatever you post it has to be relevant and all of that what other yeah i was going to start with that and say Really, content is the key thing. Content is what drives, um, what will attract people to you. Yeah. Then I think also, like we've mentioned just now, people want to know who's behind something. Generally, I think maybe in these parts, because especially with lifestyle type businesses, they want to know the person who's behind it. They want to attract with the individual, the personality behind it. So, so that is another way. Then I think also engagement is another way. And then there's a lot of different tactics that people do. Like there were things like giveaways who did, that used to work before. But giveaways is tricky. You have to be very strategic about it. It's just a promotional and marketing thing. You don't want to over-promote. You don't want to do too many giveaways and you're seen as a giveaway handle or giveaway platform. Yeah. But at the same time, giveaways tend to work, you know, with, so like if you're sharing credits now in Nigeria, you have all these young youngins, they would want to follow you just to get credit. But then, you then have to say, okay, so after they follow me, then what? So for me, it's always like, okay, so what's the so what? What's the bottom line? Are they going to really buy anything from me after following? So why am I trying to attract followers? So even attracting followers, you have to ask yourself, why are you trying to get so many followers? What is the, what's the underlying, you know, are you trying to use that for, I don't know, you know, to get, you know, some people actually, investors will look and see, they measure your followership actually. So there's so many reasons why people want followers, but it's not the only thing. You know, some people are doing amazingly well with very few followers because they're very intentional. Okay. They have small communities and they are just, you know, um, they, they decided, look, I want to just reach these people, transform lives in this way. And then they're doing that. So again, it's really asking those in important questions to start with. Great. Thank you. Um, folks, please, if you've got questions, can you put them in the question box? Um, I know there's a question. Let me, can you please tell us more about the annual re readings and or what they are and how they work? Sorry, I'm, I, I can't see that one anymore. It's gone off. Okay, let me see if I can. Just hang on a minute. Just let me ping it up. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, I can. Please tell us more about what algorithms are. Aha, you have to come to my training. So an algorithm is a, it's just a, what do I want to call it? Like a, a programming, some kind of programming that has been done just so that it skews. An algorithm can, can be used for anything really, but it, I, I don't know what I'm Ibene, please help me. This is computer science. Um, no, um, so it, 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 skews, it skews the way of doing things and so with social media what the algorithm then does it it doesn't allow for many things to happen as normal right so if you're scrolling through a feed and you know typically to be okay the last person that posted and the one after that ideally should go in that direction in chronological order but all of a sudden what the algorithm does it just jumbles it all up because the algorithm is trying to achieve 
um, more. The underlying reason is it wants you to spend more money on advertising just so that people can see your posts. Yeah. That's how we know it. Yeah. But also the claim is that it wants people that who, who people who you are close to to see your posts more than just anyone. That's what they say. So people who like my posts generally, like I can see my friend. Thank you, BNA. Yeah. Um, so like my friend, Mr. Beyonce, he's on here now. He tends to like my posts all the time. So because he likes my posts all the time when I post, yeah. he will probably see my posts more because he's engaged with my posts. Right. So that's the that's the hope because it wants people who engage. So you ha it, 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 it relies on engagement, okay. which is also why... You know, if maybe you put up a post and, yeah, you know, maybe you didn't really dress up or whatever. No many people like the post. Because the engagement was already low in the first few X number of minutes or whatever, it's not likely to show that post to more people because it just reckons, okay, the algorithm has said it's not really a popping post. But let's say you were looking so fly and everything um, and more people were liking your post all of a sudden in the first few, I don't know, minutes, yeah. it begins to show your picture or your video, or your content to more people. Okay. That's the algorithm for you. So it's a program, actually. It's telling the, the, it's telling the system what to do, but it's, it's, it's actually inputs at certain conditions. Okay. So it doesn't work as normal as it should. Right. So that's the algorithm. Okay. Really, that's essential. That's just kind of breaking it down into layman's terms. But there's a lot more that goes in there. There are also ways to hack and go around it. Don't tell it's them time too much to so they can come for your No, I'm just saying, but feel free to please DM me if you want to find out more. There are ways to go around and all of that. So yeah. But and um it's not just Yes, I do. I do do training. I've done training for quite a few people on here. I can see some names. Um, and yeah, even YouTube has an algorithm now. Yeah, you know, I mean, we had what well, we just had the US elections, right? I stopped it. I stopped. The, I, I wasn't on Instagram, but I was on YouTube all the time. Um, so videos that the algorithm, the algorithm was set up just so that maybe certain types of content will come up maybe because they were more in support of, I don't know, one side, one party. So if you weren't if you weren't smart or if you didn't know what you were looking for, it would just keep showing you what everybody's looking at. So all the time I kept seeing CNN, CNN news. But I want to see deeper than CNN. I want to see other, other news broadcasters, what they're all talking about. So I have to now go down and searching. But typically it's to just show everyone CNN because maybe more people have liked the CNN video. And so that's how the algorithm would work on YouTube, for example. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Another question. Okay, this is just Aramide. Do you offer some kind of service to stare? Yeah, she does training. We'll talk about that later. Yes, I do. Um, photo shoot pictures get engagement, but to me, it seems like vanity. I really struggle with it. Okay, that's because you talked about photo shoots and all of that. So she said, I, I, I missed that. Photo shoot. Let me. Okay. Okay. Photo shoot pictures get engagement. It's, 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 yeah, I mean, social media is about vanity, unfortunately, kind of. It's just because we're feeding our eyes. So if you're feeding your eyes, you know, what do eyes tend to like? You know, if you thought about like a magazine, you wouldn't want a picture that wasn't glossy anyway. So it's just what it is. It's, you know, it, it's what it is. So you have to think about it that way. You know, yeah, you can see it as it is vanity, to be honest, but it, it's what helps and it, what, it's what enhances the user experience, right, on the, on, on, on the platform. So if users are more likely to engage with all of that, then you might have to just do a bit more of it. And yeah, I know it's, it's, quite, it's quite tricky for people who want to, who have personal brands, actually, because it's almost like, hey, this is not me, but... There, 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 there's maybe a bit of a hybrid where you might want to have a face of your brand or once in a while, I don't know. But there are people who have photo shoot pictures like every other day. I know some people who take like 100 pictures every three months. So they have content. So all they do is they put the picture and then they put some nice prose or caption or whatever and we're good to go and they have all the engagement. Through that, they have customers, you know what I mean, or referrals or, you know, so, so it's intentional. It's what it is. Okay. Someone yeah, asked, exactly. Then it's what it is. <laughs> Have to use the right dates. <laughs> Someone asked the question: What are the benefits of the different social platforms? For example, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. What yeah. The so the way I see it, I, I, you know, everything has now. They've now tried to just do everything like this, but 
you know, so Twitter typically would be for thought leaders, people who want to share thoughts, um, people who had, you know, inf- information that would inspire that you would just share in like just 140 characters, just a few words. So if you were a politician, a leader, someone like you and T, you know, a pastor, a mentor, that kind of person, you know, you would always put information there. So generally it was for that, but it was also used for conversations. So a lot of those, always a lot of conversation opinion sharing but now of course it's been open so you can share anything on twitter you can share videos you can share anything then instagram um initially as i knew it back then in the, in the mid 2000s or i don't even know when now but you, you share in fact it was just for pictures of food if people remember people would share their food yeah. their travel but now of course you can use it to market to promote to sell to run campaigns to share insights and inspirational stuff as well. LinkedIn, as we know, is for professional networking. So typically, but again, now, people put all sorts there. So I think everyone had their core identity, but then because the competition is just so aggressive and stiff, we're, you're, you're realizing that you have to open up a little bit more. So I think that's actually a lesson for all of us here, for me, myself, that you may have one way, you know, one unique selling, you know, what do you call it? USB, I forgot some proposition. But, you know, um, because of the way the world is going and because you're in that line, we want to open up. As long as you've kind of gotten your, your core on lock, though, you have to make sure that at least you're doing really well there then, okay. so that you're not all over the place. But yeah, so, you know, now we have Twitter stories, LinkedIn stories, Facebook stories, Instagram, you know, it's all of them. And so for an individual or an organization, you have to also look and say, look, I don't have to be on every platform. So where am I most successful? Maybe I should capitalize on that and really spend time focusing and driving, you know, doing a lot more there as opposed to being everywhere and spreading yourself too thin. You don't have to be on every platform, actually. Um, Yeah. Great. Another question. How transparent do you need to be when it comes to your personal brand? (sighs) So, you know, with your personal brand... Again, it's all about the why. So what are you doing on there? Because transparency is more about, okay, so is it transparent? Like, do, do I have to show them my whole life story? No, you don't have to tell them your whole life story. You don't have to show everything that goes behind the scenes. You just have to define what your personal brand is about. But as long as you can connect with people and people connect with people who are real. So, you know, you want to be real. You don't have to reveal too much by being real. Like you find the balance, you know, it's not about... Well, you know, some people don't put their kids and their family up per se, but then in terms of the content and themselves, they're authentic. I think that's the more, more what I'm going for. So I think it's more defining, you know, your, your brand, you know, the value, like value prop, like I've said, and then um, just, you know, who you're trying to reach. If you're targeted about who you're trying to reach, it will really help you. But if you're trying to be everything to everyone, you you get frustrated very quickly, actually. Um, I, I, I definitely learned that. So, so yeah, it, it's important to know um, who you're, you're, you're reaching. But, yeah, you don't have to be – you don't have to have, let social media be extremely intrusive, but then you also have to engage, right? So you want people to know, like, you know, um, the good thing about stories is, for example, you can show behind the scenes, that type of thing. People want to follow you, want to connect with you. So, you know, um, you can open up in that regard, right? So, yeah, it, it's useful. But then I don't believe in taking away from who you are, right? So as much as social requires certain things, you just have to kind of define and just be creative about what can work, essentially. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, as a business and even as a, an individual, if you have a personal brand, when do you decide that, okay, I need a social media uh, manager or someone to manage my company? You know, with social media management, I don't think there's ever a set time because it depends on your objective. It depends on the amount of work that goes in. For certain social media brands, it's the owner of the brand that manages or it's, the, it's a volunteer it's an intern, it's an agency, an entire agency or company that manages outside of, you know, the company. So it really depends. And so with that, it's important to just sit down and look at, okay, so what is our core? Is our core styling? If our core is styling, then it really should be in-house because if you're styling people, you want to share 
you know, you, you want the creativity to come from within. There's no how you can separate styling from social media, even as a stylist. Even though social media is not your core, it is really an enabler. So that will be difficult. What you can then say is, you know, depending on, you can program your posts, so you can schedule your posts, or have a social media plan that allows you to then just plan effectively. But for example, for a financial services company you know that that is their core they don't want to be you know so there you might hire a social media person solely for that okay. or you might want to outsource it but then again you know there's also sensitivity of data and all so you measure it and see what works for you right. then um the easiest way typically they have people who intern to so you might have interns so you want to start with interns and then see how you can have them on full time but i think it's important to think about you know your brand long term so will you have an intern and then in the end maybe when you've made enough you can hire someone or do you want to be the one doing it from now till you know so you have to just see what works essentially okay. yeah Thank you really so depends. much. Harvey. This has been quite insightful. <laughs> Thank you. I don't even think I have how long have we spent. It feels like it's only been like what? 15 well, minutes. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> guys, if you've got questions, she's, we've still got a few more minutes or so. So please put. Oh, wow. On. It's one hour already. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but you wow. did come on till almost um, 10 past. So that's fine. Okay. Um, okay, okay. Okay. What okay. was I going to say now? I've got me. Yeah, any questions, please make sure you put them in there. Okay, Christians and the uses of um, the use of social media yes. as a Christian. Yes, Tell my favorite. About... Sorry, I'm a bit biased. I mean, I'm not biased. I'm very open, but this is an area I'm passionate about. Um, I have done a lot of social media for ministry type work as well, um, ministries. Um, so, Auntie, your question is about Christians and social media in terms of content or in terms of the use? Both. If so, so again, I think it just, it, 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 it boils down to the, so why, what are we on social media for? Because you don't want to be, you don't want to, you don't want to lose who you are because of what is trending. Yeah. Um. So, as a Christian, there is uh, there's a scripture, I think it's something about being in the world, but not of. But not it's very, very challenging to do that um, as a young, social, savvy person. But it, then again, it's not like before. So now it's almost cool to be Christian because you don't have Buddha. All of a sudden, you know, it's like it's a movement. Before it wasn't like that. So there's a plus there. But even in that, it's really important to... Um, own what your truth is so if your values and your truth speak to a certain thing then it should you really shouldn't then be doing what everybody else is doing so i think even even with social media the foundation has to be the word because and the word is so applicable even though we think ah, about social media the word is so applicable you can find scriptures that are relevant to what we're going through in our social media day and age if you really take time the word is the foundation because if not, we'll just be all over the place, but it's a good compass. So at least you know who you are, whose you are, what you stand for, who you're called to is another thing, just so that then you're not frustrated and exasperated. If you're trying to be what you're not, you will probably be frustrated. Yeah. Then again, also in terms of, like I said, so because we feed, there's just so much content that we're feeding ourselves, but you also have to be careful because there's just so much. You stumble into all sorts you know, on, on social media and then all of a sudden you're feeding yourself with these contents that typically you wouldn't have even, you know, been doing that. So it's important to be careful about how much time you spend, but also what you're consuming because it may just be, oh, it's just content. I have a friend who sent me some, he's always sending me funny stuff. I don't even, sometimes I, I'll just see the DMs and I won't click on it because I know it's just, it's just unnecessary. And I said to him, that, I'm not going to read it. Too. I'm not going to watch the video. He's like, ah, but it's just it's just videos. But again, that's what it is. So with the world, it's just videos. It's just content. But actually, it's not just that because it's what you're feeding your mind with. And you know, um, 
as a man thinks or so is he so if you're thinking thoughts that are lustful or whatever then you're lustful right but how do you begin staying lustful thoughts it's because you're feeding your mind with lustful thoughts and it's not about pointing fingers or anything it's just it's just this reality what you consume is what you become if you feed yourself with a lot of fats <laughs> you're going to end up putting on weight on all so my friend she drinks a lot of water every day she's always putting it on her group just refilled my bottle of water so i'm sure she's as clean as anything inside so it's just what it is in terms of what you feed so content is just so important i can't overemphasize it and sometimes you seem like a prude but really and truly you have to think about okay so the bigger picture your mind what are you putting out as an individual you know or do you just want to be like everyone else you know just new direction you just have to make up that make that decision and and tough choices i know a lot of people who are very strict with their usage and their consumption or whatever they may not say so you never know but yeah you just have to be intentional about that so you know when i think about social media um, one of the scriptures that comes to mind is um i'm looking for it that says do not become so well adjusted to the culture of this world where you seem mm. to be fitting to the culture and then you forget about where you're coming from but i guess like i think it's your friend uh, beyonce that said own your truth and you said know your why you know it's yes. important before yeah. you get on this thing and jump on the bandwagon especially with all these yeah. challenges that i can see ah. <laughs> it's a nice challenge i don't know what that is <laughs> i don't think i want to know what that I was is telling my friends i was running away from that from looking cuz i have been that this is not going to end well no start <laughs> so i wasn't clicking on any then someone sent to whatsapp group and i accidentally i am in a whatsapp video i was like ha you know um so so yeah it's just just the world has changed and you just have to be intentional i think you know it's 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 fun when you just watch something but you just have to know your mind so for me i have to be careful what i consume because if not I, you know next thing i just start having flashes of <laughs> that thing later you know and it's almost like I'm from where to where so i know my i know myself you know so you have to know yourself essentially so yeah. <laughs> Just what it is. <laughs> I just, I just remember now this thing about what you, you know, you see something and before you know, it, you know, there's this challenge. Um, I think it's a song by what's his name. It's um single. I'm searching. I'm sure you've seen that. Okay, I don't know. There's this song. I'm so sorry. I've been off and I've been rusty. And I've just, I've been I didn't lost. I didn't realize I was singing it on my until two boys said, "Mommy, what is that?" And is this yeah. the original thing where you're single? I'm searching. Okay, and, oh slow gosh, motion. Yeah, I'm sorry. I know that. You know, and it's also the same with music, right? It's the same thing. I have a friend here, Mo. We always talk about it, like in terms of music, right? So if you if you listen to certain types of music, yeah. you know, you, that's where your subconscious mind. You can wake up actually playing that song. Or sometimes maybe someone sang a song and then you just start singing a song in your mind. You're like, how did I get that song from all of a sudden? <laughs> so imagine what that is doing. So it's just important to 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 take just pay pay attention yeah. because if you listen to a lot of music that speaks to aggression <clears throat> or read a lot of content, yeah, you know somehow you know you might even say ex- exhibiting aggressive behavior and you may never know where it came from. But it's because that's what you were feeding. your mind with so social media is wild it's you know it's, it's you have to kind of yeah tame tame it's it can be wild animal tame it tame it no yeah. um somebody said um we have to do better i'm waiting for when we call people to account for what they post on ig the lies i don't think there's anything we can really do with that cuz i i mean what do you think i almost that and if this time display that okay one okay yes. been it for you can you say okay yes we have to oh yes yeah yeah hey okay i'm waiting for when we call people to account ah. yeah on the the lies the deceits the next generation ah there's just so much we could have a whole session about that um that's that's why you know you shouldn't really take to take things too serious if you want to be so if somebody wants to sell their packaging to you and you're going to buy it like that then good luck to you 
So that's where your own discernment comes. You know, you can also ask questions, you know, reach out to people, say, okay, what do you know about this person? Just so that then you're not carried away. But there's a lot of that. There's a lot of packaging, a lot of lies, of course. It's media. It's what the media does, even mainstream media. This is why there's just all this finger points that mainstream media, you know, and what the, the revelation I got was that we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be scared the enemy has definitely captured, you know, and is using the media aggressively, okay. but we can't now just leave it to the enemy. This is where the children of God also need to begin to then perpetuate media, you know, share your encouragement, share your whatever you have that we can use to edify and encourage other people. We are also meant to counter. So we can't say, ah, hey, the media has become so violent, evil, oh, let's stay away. It's not, it's not the way to go. Even though I have to say, the way the media is being utilized now, that's what's happening, where it's almost like it's the other kingdom that is the one thriving with media. But you, we can actually take it back, you know, and begin to share our content, just in you know, any little way, you know, um, just, yeah. Media is for, because this is what we're going to use to reach out to more people, encourage people, save souls, prevent people, prevent deaths and suicide and all those things, you know. Yeah. It's the media. It's what is the media. See how the media turned the whole election. So yeah. we can't, we can't run away from it. We can't run away from it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for Lamide? Yeah. For Lamide before she goes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, be the light. Be the light. Honestly, be the light. Yes. Be the light. Be the light. Thank you for that. Thank you for that reminder. Of me, honestly, <laughs> it's not. I, I think you know. Um, we. It's. A, I keep. You have to keep reminding yourself that. You are in. Yeah, on this life, you're not here for you. And I keep having to remind myself. You know, because when you know that you're not here for you at all, and say, okay, look. It's just the work I'm here to do, and then so just do these things, put this stuff out, just encourage people. But when you start thinking, oh, I'm too shy, I'm too this, I'm going through this, which sometimes I go through, then you're forgetting that you're actually not here for yourself, you're here for other people, you know. And so, yeah, if you know that that's what it is, you have to just die empty. So, whatever is in you has to come out, you know. Yeah. So, be, <laughs> so be light, be light. Thank you for the reminder. Yeah, yeah, you are the light. Yeah. The world. We're here to go into the world. It's what yep, yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah. We're meant to go into the world. We can't yeah. stay back and say, Oh, I keep complaining about social media. So we do our yeah. bit to, to push back the darkness. Yeah, yeah that, that is it. Yeah. So much going on. So much going on. There, there, there have, I know someone who is uh his he uses his in some into some other types of religion. So he uses webinars to recruit people. But you wouldn't know, because you, you just think, ah, okay, you know, and it's, they use all these sophisticated, because the enemy is going to use nice, sophisticated, very intellectual, you know, and so you know, people are attracted to that more, beauty, mm. fame, intellect, you know, and then under that, there's just things going on. So what are we as children of God doing? So it's actually a challenge, you know, that honestly, um, we need to step out, lunge out. Are you guys going to step out? That's what we are doing. Step out, fun. launch out, do your bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, any any last um, word for us, Aramide? Anything we should know about? Anything else we should know about social media before we go? Oh, um, yes. I think okay. Just... Say okay. that, and then I want you to talk about your training and your. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I think I think it's important to be authentic be authentic just so that then you don't lose yourself and then you don't know who you are or then you're lost. If you're authentic from the get-go, then it really helps you. So just stay true to who you are okay. on, off social media. Um, yeah, so that's that's all I had. Um, and then, yeah, in terms of social media, so I do social media for, um, training for corporates, businesses, um, non-profits, ministries and um um more governments a few um with regards to that so i do a lot of digital they call we call it digital transformation digital it's called digital really but yes yeah, it's, it's all about social media so if you're interested please send me a message i really need to repackage my my personal bio so as as me that's what i do i do a lot of things around social media as aramide and then of course there's niger startups which is the um, um online community for entrepreneurs um and feel free to follow us on social media as well so, so yeah. please, can you put her handle on the um put her Handle up so at Aramide 
Abe at Niger Startups. Any other one? Do you mean, okay, yeah, Aramide Abe and, and at Niger Startups. Niger startups. Yeah. Those two. Please put that yeah. up for anyone who wants yeah. to send her direct message. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. This was great. Yes, this was really you good. so much. And guys, this was so please, good. make sure you send her a direct message to get on her. Thank training. you. I will respond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's it, Aramide. Thank you. Thank you. So, no, I don't think, let me just check to make sure no more questions. Mm -hmm. I think this was really good. Yeah, that's it. Sweetheart, thank you so, so much. Thank it's you. It's been really, really <laughs> very informative. Thank you. And uh, yes, I've learned a lot too. So. Thank you. So many comments. I'm going to go and watch because there's a lot of comments and people saying things that I need to go and read and just, you know, a lot of engagement. That was great. I, um, put it up. It's not going to show the comments. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I could see some, I could see most of the comments, like people just talking and yeah. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. Well, you guys can send her um, the comments. If you, if it's something you want her to know, just send her a direct message, please. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. This I'm was sure fun. We'll have you back some other time. Hope to be back soon. Yes. Yeah, definitely. So guys, I'll be wearing my t shirts then. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be wearing my hangout cafe yes, t shirt then. I keep I keep reminding you. Sorry, Auntie. Just yeah. <laughs> That's right. No, we have to get we have to get your t shirt and um, mug to you. Your hangout mug. Thank you. And thank you, folks. Thank you so much for joining us today. And um, we'll see you next week at 12 noon. And oh, we have another noon. guest for Mr. God bless you. Don't forget, God bless be you, authentic. Everyone. All your truth. Yeah. You're the light. Yes. Shine. Do your bit. Don't complain. Do your bit. Get out there <laughs> and be positive role models. And yeah, love you lots. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you so, you so much. much. Have some God love, bless folks. you. Show her some love. God bless you, everyone. Bye, everyone. This is so great. Oh, great. <laughs> See ya. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Whew.